One of this year's mission goals was to bring the love of Christ to the Paraguayan and Peruvian people. One way we did this was by holding many vacation Bible schools. Our theme was siempre, which means forever in Spanish. We also taught them the word in sign language, which looks like this. The sign means always, forever, and eternity. As Christians, we know the only thing that is eternal is God. The younger grades seen here decorated these hearts and wrote the word siempre on them so they could always remember. It was bittersweet to watch the kids drive away from VBS on the bus, smiling, waving, and signing siempre. Psalm 118.1 says, Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Den gracias al Señor, porque él es bueno. Su gran amor perdura para siempre. For those of you who have been to Sirifugio in Paraguay, you can agree that it is a wonderful place where the word of God is transforming hearts and lives. One little girl, Liz, shown here, is seven years old and just full of energy and fun. Her and her five-year-old sister were living on the street before coming to live at Sirifugio about a year ago. My heart was especially touched when I heard her praying for all of the kids on the street. To watch these girls go from having nothing to having faith, joy, and hope is proof that the staff at Surufuyo is doing a great job fulfilling the same mission that we here have at Christ Lutheran. As Jesus commanded us in Matthew 28, 19 to 20, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Twenty-seven, seventeen, and 18 says, I am sending you to them to open their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God so that they may receive forgiveness of sin and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And one of the ways in which we were able to share the love of Jesus in Paraguay was to host vision clinics at a local church. The people would come for free reading glasses, and meanwhile, the main focus would be to share the gospel with them. And while they were waiting to be seen, they were shared the gospel, and their children were given a vacation Bible school where they had crafts and songs and games they got to play. And while they were waiting, the children also got to hear about the love of Jesus. And for these people that we pray... Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope that is which has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. And now we'd like to show you how the vision clinic works with a little skit. Good morning. Hola, bienvenidos. My name is Suzanne. Me llamo Suzanne. What is your name? ¿Cómo te llamas? Paola. Paola. I'm from the United States. Yo soy de los Estados Unidos. And I don't speak any Spanish. Y no hablo <laughs> español. So this is my translator, Kylie. Yo soy tu traductor, Kylie. Do you need some reading glasses? ¿Necesitas lentes de, um, para leer? Sí. Yes. Great. I think we can help you. Um, podemos ayudarte. First, I want you to read the smallest line on here that you can read. Primero, quiero que te lees la más pequeña línea que puedes leer. That one. Okay. So, let's try these. Vamos a probar estos. Is this worse or better? Más mejor o más malo? Más malo. She can't read. Okay. Let's try these. Vamos a probar estos. Now which line can you read? Yeah, a donde puedes leer. Esta. She can read this line. Okay, let's try one more pair. Vamos a mirar una más. Si puedo ver. 
She can see. Oh, good. Let's try our test. Can you read John 3.16 from the Bible? ¿Puedes leer esto? Porque tanto amó Dios al mundo que dio a su Hijo unigénito para que todo el que cree en él no se pierda, sino que tenga vida eterna. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Muchas gracias. When Sandy and her translator, translator Oswaldo were teaching a group of kids, Oswaldo told the kids his testimony. He told the kids how his dad abandoned him when he was a kid. When he asked the kids to raise their hand if either their mom or dad had abandoned them, about 75% of the students raised their hands. We pray for all of these children the words written by Paul in Ephesians 3.18. I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's pe holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. In Paraguay, there are over 150,000 orphans. In Peru, this number jumps to 570,000. Without parental care, many end up in the streets where they often resort to robbery, begging, or prostitution in order to survive. Deprived of a caring, supportive environment and education, they enter a vicious cycle of drugs, gang-related violence, and abuse. Society often perceives street children as parasites to get rid of, rather than as vulnerable, neglected human beings who grow up without family support. It is especially for these children that we continue to do mission work in South America and to fulfill the mission of Surafuyo from James 127, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Every Sunday, we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. The same faith, this good news of the gospel, is what we shared throughout our time in Paraguay and Peru. Please join me in saying the words of the Apostles' Creed. because we're going to do something special. So come on up, kids. I'm going to have my helpers come too. And they're going to give you a special paper. Yeah, and parents, stay on up here. Come on up. Got to come up on the stage. Come on. Well, good morning. My name is Mr. Roan. Some people might call me Uncle Bill. There's several um, people that were on our mission trip, and they would say Uncle Bill. And in Spanish, my name is Guillermo, but they would call me Tio Guillo. Can you say Tio Guillo? Tio Gio, that was my name to a lot of those people. Well, I'm going to tell you a special story using this paper. Our theme at the Vacation Bible School was siempre, forever, always. And you see that in the middle of this paper here. It says siempre, which means always. And this was a sign. Put your finger up. Put your finger up. 
and then turn, spin it around. That's a sign for always. So when we said siempre, we said always. We used our finger like this. Well, I've got a story to tell you about Jesus using this paper. And some of our helpers here are going to help you. So pay attention to them because they'll help you with folding. God our Father always loves us. He always wanted us to be with him. But sin came into the world, and so we fell away from him. But God had a special plan. So what you're going to do now is you're going to fold the paper over like this. Okay? So it makes a point. So some of the helpers around you will help them. Everybody got a point like this? Perfect. Perfect. God loved us so much that he sent his son from heaven down to earth as a baby. And we know the story of Christmas, right? Jesus came to earth as a baby to be our savior. Well, when he was on earth, he lived with his earthly mother and father. So now we're going to make a house. So now you're going to take this point here and bend it right down like this. Helpers around you will help you. That's right. And send you end up with a house like this. Let me help you with that. Okay, now. So he lived in a house with his mother and his father, and he learned about God from them. And then when he grew up, he wanted to tell others about his heavenly father, about the love of God, that God always loves you. So now we're going to take our little house here and we're going to fold it in half like this. That's right. So Jesus went around to all the people in his country telling them about the love of God, but that made some other people very angry and upset. They didn't like it at all. In fact, turn yours upside down, it was like a thumbs down to Jesus. The lies people said, no, we don't like what you're saying, even though Jesus was talking about God's love and everything. So they wanted to hurt him. So now you're going to take right here in the middle, like this, and we're going to tear this in half. See how I'm tearing? So take it at the top and start to tear it in half. Okay, we're going to take this like this. Okay, now tear it. And we're going to tear it all the way down. Tear it all the way off. They want to cut his life off. Okay, hold on to that. And they... Some people would say they want to crumple up. Now, we're not going to, we're going to hold on to this scrap paper because we don't want to leave it up here. But they want to take the scrap paper and they just want to throw it away. And so they took Jesus and they killed him. What did they put Jesus on that killed him? They put him on a certain something. A cross. And they thought he was dead. But he wasn't. He died for three days, but then he came alive again. Now we know the only way to heaven is through Jesus. You can't go get to heaven on a boat, can you? And you can't get to heaven on a rocket ship, can you? Yeah, but when you open this up, we know that we get to heaven through the cross. And in the middle of your cross, I'm going to give you this one. In the middle of our cross is the word always, siempre, because God always loves us and God wants us always to be with him. So we keep this cross and it will remind you that God always, always wants you to be his child. Thank you for coming up today.
On behalf of our team, thank you for coming this morning to hear about our stories of Paraguay and Peru this summer. Uh, Jennifer Blau was supposed to share her story at this point, and she wasn't able to be with us today, so I'm going to share her story. So these are Jennifer's words. I had heard for years now about Paraguay mission trips and all the names and places that were mentioned, but it wasn't until actually going there that I was able to grasp what it all looked like and meant. So here's my takeaway. This was our group from Christ Lutheran, plus my two granddaughters, Camille and Estelle, who live in Wrightwood, California. They are pretty much the reason I finally decided to go, and so glad I did. We flew into Asuncion, which is the capital of Paraguay. We stayed in a hotel on the outskirts of Asuncion, but work this year took place close to the actual place of Surifuyo. It is near the city of Tobati, an hour bus ride from the hotel. Jennifer goes on to say that Surifuyo is a little slice of heaven in that country. When you pull up to the gates and then walk in, you can feel the peace of that beautiful place, a place set apart primarily for orphans and widows, which includes single moms. They have 13 acres of green land, trees, and a stream running through it. Three buildings, which all have names, are multi-purposed. There's a church gym building, a room with classrooms and a central meeting area, and then a kitchen, dining hall, and attached living quarters for the children and their caretakers, as well as an amphitheater and a playground. Lots of kids running around with big smiles on their faces. Most of them have come from awful situations. Paraguay has more than their share of abuse happening. They have a court system that will pull the victims from their environment, but no foster system in which to place them. Part of what Surifuyo Paraguay does is take some of these children in, put them in a family-like living situation, and then give them schooling, which prepares them for being employed later on. But what I really loved is that they learn all about Jesus in beautiful, faith-growing environment. These kids were studying Romans in great depth and loving it. At Surifuyo, there's such a feeling of love and safety. One of my favorite parts was a story we were able to hear from one young girl there. Lots of tears. She is so grateful for Surifuyo and is planning on going into Christian work. There are lots of ways in which you can adopt a child, which means contributing to the cost of their daily care. You can ask any of us about what that means. There's also an all-day Saturday school which pulls in children from the surrounding area. They get fed physically and spiritually in a fun all-day experience. We were able to interact with these kids on our very first day. Really fun. Jennifer concludes sharing that Surifuyo is the love work of Scott and Michelle Cavandal. God bless Scott in his business, and then he and Michelle listened to God tugging at their heart to start this work, and Surifuyo began. Honestly, your contributions, the support of Christ Lutheran Church, is so well placed with this ministry. I was very impressed by all that I saw there. Five other members of our team were not able to be here this morning, so watch this video as Alyssa, Zave, Leah, Tenley, and Abby share their stories. Build your kingdom here, let the My favorite part about the mission trip to Paraguay was going to Surifuyo and working with the kids, and one in particular, her name was Abigail. Um, she spoke only a little English, and we spoke only a little Spanish, but what I learned is that friendship doesn't need a language, and at the end of the trip, Abigail gave me Leah and Abigail notes <laughs> <laughs> um, that said stuff like, I love you, I love you so much, and she wrote our names on the paper, and it was just a great experience that made me treasure it. I thought that going door-to-door -door evangelizing was going to be very hard, 
but then I figured out that I was with Mrs. Cole, <laughs> and so that made me more calm, and then also I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit that I've never felt before, and that gave me a sense of peace. I really like the VBS because, well, I did it with my mom, and <laughs> that was fun, and we had second graders, and we did crafts and play games, and they got to eat, which they don't really get to do. The craft that we did was a heart that said Sampre on it, which means always, and we did a hand motion for it because it was an easier way to get them to understand. And um, we, we gave them hot dogs and they really liked it. When we got the opportunity to go into Tobati to do the vision clinic, I can still totally remember this little man that came in. For some reason, he had this little hat on and this cute little grin with not very many teeth, but he was just so cute and so lovable. He was this character, almost a character out of a Disney movie. And I remember just the look on his face when we found glasses that would work for him and he just lit up like almost like fireworks on the 4th of July and just seeing his face and remembering him is almost like it's happened this morning. Mm -hmm. If you have the opportunity to go on a short-term mission trip, do it. And I think one of the things many of us worry about, I would say are two. One, how in all the world am I going to raise the funds to do this? And two, the door-to-door -door evangelism piece. And I just really want to encourage you, if you've been sitting on the fence about going on a short-term mission trip, that God is going to provide. And I know that seems a little hokey and like, oh, that's easy for you to say because you guys have just raised the money to do this. But I saw so much generosity in so many unlikely places, I would say. And the Lord just provided so fruitfully for our entire team to go to Paraguay. And secondly, the door-to-door -door evangelism piece is not how you're imagining it will be. And um, it's just so exciting to go with a team, including a translator that by the end you will just love. And the people there, nobody visits Paraguay. It's in the middle of nowhere, kind of. It's not a beach community. People aren't vacationing there. They don't have any product that's really famous. So nobody goes to Paraguay. So when Americans show up to Paraguay simply to share the good news of Jesus, it's gonna change people's lives and they're gonna listen to you. And that made the door-to-door -door evangelism, although I was just wrecked inside about how I was gonna do that, ah, oh, it was so great. And I came to know a couple of older ladies that I was able to share the gospel with who I don't know, I'm not gonna say like, oh, and they accepted Christ on the spot. That's not what I'm claiming, but they certainly were very receptive to the gospel message. And it was a super great experience. When you go door to door, it's something you're not familiar with, it's something you're uncomfortable with, but just placing yourself in that, in that chance or, or risking that chance of failure and seeing yourself come out stronger is just inspiring. Um, it makes you want to do it again. Mm -hmm. It pushed you totally. It pushed me totally out of my comfort zone. But, like I said, with the risk of failure, but also knowing you'll be caught in his arms. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's a lot of risk, but so much reward. Totally mm -hmm. worth it. Do it. Do it. Do Go it. On a mission trip. <laughs>
Um, and that's when doubts started to come. Like, why won't God provide more people? Should I just go to Paraguay? Um, and the whole time I just felt like God was saying, it's okay, like, just trust me. And so I tried my hardest to do that. Um, so when it came time to head to Paraguay, we had an amazing trip. Um, but after the trip was over, I had to say goodbye to my mom. Um, we had just finished up in Paraguay, and I'd be soon flying over to Peru, and saying goodbye to the person who has been with me on all my mission trip adventures was very hard. Um, I knew that I must be strong and continue on my journey, and we were going to be heading to Peru, and the scary part was there was only six of us in a whole country ahead of us, um, and very little sleep. Um, but once we got there, we headed straight to a feeding center, and that's when we saw the providence of God at work. Um, we went into this very small feeding center, and we saw that it was overflowing with joy with children. And I realized that if 20 people had come like the year before, it would not have been that effective that on, in a place that only fits six missionaries. Um, and that was just the beginning of the providence of God. Um, the next instance um, that we saw was when we were on our way to Hogar, Manaheim. It was an orphanage that cared for children as young as a couple of days old. Um, this child um, was there last year, and he was a week old when we met him. He had some really bad health issues, and um, it was just so sad to see him there. And now he is doing better. He still has some stuff going on, but there's caretakers there treating him every day. But um, on our way there, um, I was taking a nap, of course, um, <laughs> but I was awoken by our leader, Michelle, saying, you all have your passports, right? And I look around, and there's three cops on motorcycles just, like, around our van, and I was very startled. Um, we pulled over, and they started to tell us that our van was smoking. Um, it was a godsend that they told us. Who knows what could have happened? Um, our brakes were not working correctly, so we had to exit our vehicle. And right at that moment, a minivan taxi was passing by. And so we quickly flagged them down. But what are the odds of that? And then we realized where we were, and there was an auto shop right there. It was, it was crazy. Um, and it was a blessing, though, that the taxi was there because um, we needed to find transportation fast or our whole schedule would be off. Um, and we, some of us stayed at the auto shop and some of us went on um, to the orphanage. And this was one of my favorite places. Um, that young boy's name is Liam. Um, he's about four years old and he's sweet and warms up to just about everybody very quickly. Um, I'm grateful to say that the providence of God got us there so that we could play with these wonderful children and not only feed them physically, but spiritually. I loved the whole trip, but this was one of my favorite parts. Um, I grew so much on this trip and met so many long-lasting friends. Um, I also grew very independently. It's a little embarrassing to say, but I am jealous of my mom. Um, she is, um, she's usually the highlights of all the trips, and she's just amazing in general, and she's someone I look up to, but I was glad in Peru when they met me, they knew Kylie, you know? Um, and it was great because God just kind of put away that gross human envy that all of us have so that I can grow in myself, and I really appreciated that. Um, but I, I love you, Mom, and thank you for everything. Um, and just God will always provide on these trips. Um, thank you, everyone, for listening. And wouldn't you want to come to Peru? How many of you helped us pack meals here in the gym the last few years? Have you ever wondered where those meals went and how they were used after they left here? Well, they go, they leave on a truck, they go to a container, they get shipped to Lima. And I want to share with you how God is using our Easter offerings and those meals that we have packed we went to Peru to visit, support, and encourage the Suifuyo ministry partners in that country. 
and had the opportunity to visit eight children's care centers and see how our meals are being used. We witnessed the love of Jesus being poured out in some very destitute places by people without much of their own, yet serving others, using the meals like we packed at Christ Lutheran. As Kylie said, we had a small team, and our small team would serve in many ways. We would deliver boxes of meals. Jim had the opportunity to build a stand for a new cooktop. We got to help prepare and serve meals and lead mini VBSs using the, the gospel bracelet kits that we assembled this spring. And we continue to share the message of Siempre. Each center receives the exact same basic meal. In a different way, they add spices to it, vegetables, chicken, beef, eggs, potatoes, all kinds of things. They all share the gospel with the children who come. Our meals are supporting so many different kinds of ministries, and I want to share just three of them with you. When we landed in Lima, we headed directly to Comas, which would be the most impactful place for Jim and for me. We walked up and down dirt banks and treacherous steps until we descended into what seemed like a dungeon. But it was not a dungeon at all, but a place of love and safety in the home of Neri, her sister Cecilia, and their father. They lived in a very poor neighborhood that's troubled by pedophiles. They have so very little themselves and live in a very small space, yet they open that small space each week so children can receive a hot meal and learn about Jesus. 25 kids heard the message of Siempre that day from our team. 31-year-old Shadi is a professional baker and teacher and mother of a two-year-old. God laid on her heart to use her gifts to help the single moms in a poor barrio. So she found the barrio of Ati and heard the ministry of Surafuyo and reached out for help with what she was doing. She opened Nueva Sonrisa, New Smiles Center. Three days a week, Shadi makes the one and a half hour trip by bus each way from her home. Tuesday and Thursday, she teaches the women to bake to help them make a living. While they're there learning to bake, their children are receiving help with their homework and learning about Jesus. On Saturday, she has a children's care center where she spends even more time in that barrio. The children are fed and spend more time with helpers who tell them about the love of Jesus. While we were there, three moms and their children came by to see if they could join as well. We all wondered, would we sacrifice like Shadi is to serve the poor? She was truly an example to all of us. Primera Iglesia Cristiana Bautista is a church in Santa Rosa, which seems like our Malibu, except in a very poor area outside of Lima. It took us two hours to get there, even though we left our hotel before six in the morning. This church opens its doors to the children of the community, provides not only meals for over 60 children three times a week, but a super learner program where they can learn English. Blanche, a woman who generously provides for this church and community, also provides space at her business for the container, which stores all the boxes of meals. When I showed her photos of our packing event, she was so moved to see how we came together, all ages, to provide these meals for Peru. She said they come for the food, but they leave with more than that. They leave knowing that God loves them and cares for them. Years ago, Paraguay stole my heart, but Peru has broken my heart, and it broke Jim's as well. The magnitude of the poverty can be so discouraging, but we were blessed beyond measure to see firsthand how God is using our Easter offerings and the meals that we pack. The meals are an invitation to come and experience the love and care of Jesus and provide an opportunity to share the gospel in some very depressing, poor places. Yes, we experienced the great need, but in return we saw how God is growing beautiful things in these very dark places. His people are sacrificing so much to serve him by caring for the children of Peru. And we've been given the opportunity to partner with him in this mission whether through supporting our team, as you so generously have done, financially, 
in prayer, helping us pack meals, or going with us next year to experience how God will work in and through you. If you want more information about mission trips, speak with any of us. If you're interested and feel God tugging on your heart, write that on your connection card and we'll be praying for you. Thank you for allowing us to share our stories this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work you are doing in South America. We give you thanks and praise for an awesome team and mission trip to South America this year. Today, we especially pray for the orphans and widows in Peru and Paraguay. We ask that you would take the seeds we have planted there and help them to grow and flourish. We pray that they would know that you are always with them and that you will always love them. Siempre. We ask all these things in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen.